So with regards to resistance and resistivity, uh, there are four things that impact the resistance of a conductor. That's length, cross-sectional area, the type of material, and the temperature. With regards to length, we know that if we have a conductor that is 100 metres long, it will have a resistance, providing all of these things stay the same. So let's assume it has one ohm, and you and this relates to 100 metres in length, and then you join it onto another piece of cable, identical in length and size and material, and that also has a one ohm. We know that RT therefore will be R1 plus R2, given a grand total of this example, two ohms. So what we can learn from this is resistance is proportional to length. Okay, so if resistance goes up, then the length must have gone up. If the length goes up, the resistance goes up. So if it goes up by three times, the resistance will go up by three times. So everything is proportional. With regard to cross-sectional area, cross-sectional area, providing all of these stay the same again, this time it's a bit like looking at a parallel circuit. So if I have two conductors and I put them in parallel with each other, two one mil conductors, then their resistance will go down. So this is said to be inversely proportional to cross-sectional area. So how does that work? Well, here's a conductor and it is one ohm again. And then we put it in parallel. We basically connect it alongside another conductor. So now we've got two one mil conductors in parallel with each other, so in other words, you've got two millimetre squared. In that case, then the resistance is going to go down. So we know then that RT is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. In this case, would come to 0.5 of an ohm. So it's inversely proportional. And it's inversely proportional to it. So resistance in length is proportional to it. CSA is inversely proportional. So as cross-sectional area goes up, resistance will go down. So this is based on something called the resistivity, which is rho. For copper, 17.3 times 10 to the minus 9, and this is based on ohms per metre cubed of material. So the other thing that comes into play is temperature. Temperature we will look at, um, but maybe in another video uh, where we can do calculation related to that. But basically, if the temperature changes all of these things above, then the resistance will also change. Very important for those people who test an inspection, this bit we have to take into consideration for those people who are familiar with the uh, wiring regulations when they look at ZSs uh, for in the regs book or in the on-site guide you will note they are different the reason they are different is because of different temperatures the ones in the regs books typically are based at 70 degrees and the ones in the on-site guide are at a lower temperature more resembling the ones that you would test so temperature will also change the resistance of a material. What we are, what we can say is they tend to have, conductors tend to have a positive temperature coefficient, which basically means if temperature goes up, resistance also goes up. Okay, so here's a question. A copper cable, 100 metres in length and 1.5 millimetres squared, calculate its resistance. Well, here's our formula. Okay, so what we can we can ignore temperature completely, so we'll just keep it standard. So R is equal to rho times L divided by A. I always like to lay these out here so I can find out what I've actually got. So 
Resistance is what we're trying to find, so that's our unknown. Uh, rho, which is based on the resistivity of copper, well it's told us what copper is, but we already looked at that copper is actually 17.3 times 10 to the minus 9 lots of ohms per meter cubed. So that, remember that's in meters. Our length we have, which is 100 meters, and we have an area, and it's in 1.5, which is a fairly standard size that we're all familiar with. But this is in millimetres, and the problem is we need this to be in... We've either convert all these to millimetres, or convert that one to metres, or, or to whatever other unit you wish to change them to, as long as they're all the same. It doesn't really matter. But the easiest thing to do is turn this into millimetres. And a way to remember this, we need to get it to metres squared. So this is already in millimetres. Now remember, there are a thousand millimetres in a metre. So a thousand times a thousand, which is a square of it, is a million. So a million is to the minus six is what we're going to do to this. So all we need to do is to convert it is put 1.5 times 10 to the minus six. And that is now in meters squared. So this is what we need to convert it to. Once we know these figures, we can now put them in over here. So Rho, which is 17.3 times 10 to the minus 9, so it's a very small number, multiplied by the length, which is 100, and then we divide that by this figure here, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6. So in our calculator, remember 17.3. And we're going to use this one here, times 10 to the power of, you can use that one or that one, so I'll use that one, minus 9 times 100. That's the top line comes to that. We're going to divide that number by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6. And we get 1.153 ohms. So here's another question, similar, but this time an aluminium cable, 100 metres in length, and a diameter of one millimetre. So this is slightly different, and calculate its resistance again. So again, I like to lay them out like so. So resistance, well, that's what we're trying to find. Rho, well, I didn't tell you what it was before, but I know that rho well, aluminium is 28.4 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, so that's our aluminium. Um, slightly higher than copper, but then we'd expect it to be because it's not as good a conductor. Our length is still 100 metres. At the moment, we need to know this area, and we don't know the area. So there's an unknown we need to find here. So we need to remember how to do find the area of a circle because we know the diameter. So to find A, we need to do pi as we know the diameter of pi d squared divided by 4 is one formula we can use, I know there are others. So that's pi times the diameter divided by 4. And if we put this into our calculator, so pi times 1 squared, which we do a lot, divided by 4. 0.785 and this is now millimetres squared so that's what it is in millimetres but we don't want it in millimetres we want it in metres squared because all these are in metres so we can now convert this to metres 0.785 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Now we can put these in 
uh, 100 metres of aluminium, 1 metre, 1 millimetre in diameter is 3.61 ohms.